Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's earnings season, Bryce. Did you know that? Just like Woo-doo. holiday season? Yeah, it's just like holiday season, but for traders. And so in this video, I'm going to be going over the earnings that are this week. I'm going to go over the stocks, where they're at in the chart. I'm going to analyze the option chain. And Bryce, do you know that you can buy shares, you can sell shares, you can buy options, and you can sell options, right? I did know that. You did know that? Well, depending on what the option chain is saying, that's going to help us decide what we're going to do. So I'm also going to ask your opinion on what the earnings are going to be, or at least the reaction. Why am I going to ask you, Bryce? So you can do the opposite? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So I can do the opposite. So whatever Bryce thinks the earnings are going to be, you have a statistical edge of doing the opposite. Think of Bryce as like our general retail trader and think of Weenie as like an advanced retail trader. That sometimes is a general retail trader, but only because I'm playing 6D chess against the market makers. So let's get started in the video. First up we got is Google and we got we got uh, ES on the right. We're filming this pre-market right now on a Tuesday morning, but we got Google over here. Google having earnings this week. And if we take a look at Google, and by the way, the, the chart is pretty interesting, isn't it? We got orange candles and we got purple candles. Kind of a little bit spooky, right? Spooky season, mm-hmm. orange and black maybe. But um, either way, the Google option chain has a very high expected move. Actually, the volatility has gone down. So each day, the volatility can go up or the volatility can go down on any of these tickers. But basically, Google seems to have a fair expected move. I would look at Google Iron Condor. So I'm looking at a neutral Google earnings. What are you looking for for Google, Bryce? I suppose I was going to say the same thing. I think Google's going to whipsaw up and down as the reaction, but generally not move. Yeah, I think like you could do like a a put credit spread, sell a put credit spread around the 98 area, and you could sell a bear call credit spread at the 108 area. If you take a look at something like Robinhood, if I go over to Google right over here and just go to click on Google right here. On Robinhood. Yep, on Robinhood right over here. You can pull up Google, trade Google options. The way that this would look on the graph right over here would be sell the 108, buy the 110. So if that collects $41 of credit, but then going just you know down here to the 98 level, sell the 98, and then buy the 96. So this is our iron condor. It's about a one-to-one risk to reward, a little bit less than that, but you have a much higher probability of collecting the $92 than you do of losing the 108. So that's for Google earnings. Pretty interesting stuff. It'll be interesting to see if Google stays within that range. Microsoft over here, you know, same thing on the chart. You know, lots of resistance up here. You know, a little bit of cluster of support down there. What do you think Microsoft's going to do after its earnings report, Bryce? I think Microsoft is going to thunk. Oh, boy, you think it's going to thunk? Man, I thought it was going to thunk, too, so maybe it's going to go up now. (laughs) (laughs) Either way, the expected move is $13. That's a decently high expected move. The way I would capitalize off of that is probably doing something like bear call credit spreads into like late November, even December. So what does that kind of look like? Well, you go over to Microsoft over here and you go over to trade options and then maybe go to something like, yeah, yeah, you could get the more time you give, the slower that it moves, but, and you also collect more premium, but the slower you get paid. On Microsoft, I would do something like sell the 255, buy the 260. Okay, here we go. Now it's showing the correct thing. Collecting $210 of credit, but risking 290, but there's a much greater likelihood that you're gonna collect the $210, especially if Microsoft is underneath that 255 level. So that is Microsoft. Decently high expected move, so you don't wanna be buying options, remember, We can buy options and we can sell options. You can buy shares and you can sell shares. You only wanna be buying options when the expected move is low and you think that the market can beat it in either direction. That's the only time where you wanna buy a call or buy a put. Conversely though, you wanna sell a call or sell a bear call credit spread. I don't like having unlimited risk. And you wanna sell a put if you think the IV is high or if the expected move 
is very high and you think that it can stay within that range based on what you see on the chart. Right, Bryce? Right. Yeah. You, you, you've gotten a good <laughs> grasp of options over the years, right? KO, Coke. Hey, look at that. Coke did report bullish earnings. I had Coke uh, buy shares because the expected move seemed fair. And guess what? You know, we closed at 57.70. We're at about 59. We're still with inside the expected move. Coke had about a $2 expected move. So, yeah, not too shabby. You know, Coke has another about 60 to 70 cents to the upside. So, there's Coke. Already had the bullish report. Should have grabbed some, some shares yesterday. Or, calls, you know, they'll pay a little bit. But really, the, all the puts got destroyed. So, put credit spreads would have worked really well for Coke. So, I, I, you know, I said an in-out call spread if I had a gun to my head. This, these were my notes made yesterday during the live stream. So next up we got is 3M over here. Oh, um, what do you think 3M is gonna do for their earnings? Oh, they already reported. <laughs> it said they're gonna be bearish. <laughs> yeah, sell correct. sell the 122 and buy the 124. Do you, you know you know about 3M, right, Bryce? Yes, it's a Minnesota company. Yeah, Minnesota company. Mm -hmm. Well, they already reported their earnings, man. Wanted to short <laughs> that guy. I should have grabbed. I should have. You know, if you statistically take all of these trades, I can almost guarantee you that it'll be better than a coin flip. I can't guarantee any results in the market, but it's almost. more, I, I can almost guarantee that you will beat a coin flip if you take all of these earnings trades. So 3M was a bearish reaction. I said, sell the 122, buy the 124, because this is the expected move. Look at that. We haven't even hit the lower edge of the expected move. So maybe 3M has some space to sell off down to the 112 level. So 3M sideways to slightly lower from here is the most likely scenario, given that the market doesn't just scream to the upside because then everything goes up. Correlation is very high, right, Bryce? Yes. Next up we got is Visa. Visa reports on 10.25, ooh, after market. So they report today, Bryce. Visa having a $9.44 expected move. I said that this was a fair expected move. The way I would trade it is probably with just like <laughs> shares, maybe buy a small amount of shares if you think the report's going to be good. Otherwise, sitting in cash. What do you think the report's going to be for Visa, Bryce? I think it's going to break out. You think it's going to break out to the upside? <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Maybe it's going to break down to the downside now. <laughs> Lots of space down there, down to this like 181 <laughs> area. That would be the bottom edge of the expected move, 181. And so on Visa, I wouldn't trade really any options on this because the bid ask spreads are fairly wide. What's, what's great about all of these earnings reports is that you can trade them after the earnings report and probably have a pretty decent edge. So I would trade them after the report, not before. Only do it before if you're willing to gamble and you want a slightly higher odds than blackjack, in my opinion. You know, it's, it's always arguable what the odds actually are but you don't know mm -hmm. until after the fact. Next up we got is Boeing. Bryce, you think Boeing's gonna go up or down? Down. You think Boeing's gonna go down? Yes. Oh, Boeing might skyrocket now. Okay. <laughs> Boeing, $7.70 expected move. It should have been 777. That would have been funnier of an expected move. Either way though, bid ask spreads are okay on Boeing. Um, you know, if I, if, if I had to really, you know, gun to my head, I would just say cash. You know, there's, there's nothing really, there's no edge in trading Boeing before its report, mostly because there's so much muck on a lot of these stocks. Look at all this gunk over here. That's going to be overhead resistance. Look at all this gunk over here. That's going to be some support. Maybe we can break it to the downside. Maybe we can break it to the upside, but statistically, I would just say, wait, maybe you could set up like a butterfly where you buy a call right over here, sell two calls right at this like 150 strike. And then maybe like buy like the one five two fifty. That could be like a like an upwards butterfly that captures the range from like one forty five to one fifty. You get a good payout, something like that. It if it up. yeah, if it lands in between that one forty five one fifty area, um, you could do the same to the bottom side. Maybe sell a bunch of one thirty puts. Maybe like do something like buy like the one thirty seven puts, something like that. So. A lot of gunk, a lot of muck. I guess the correct terms would be supply, 
demand, you name it. But Boeing, nothing too much there. Waste management, WM. This has actually been a good dividend stock for us, Bryce, over the years. This has been a nice steady uptrend. Look at all the, the fun it's had. All everybody else has been pooping. This one's this one's just ha having people, a party. People need their trash picked up. Yeah, people need their trash picked up. So what are your thoughts on waste management earnings, Bryce? Do you think they're going to be good, bad? What do you think? Expected move is only $6.26, <clears throat> but the next week it only goes up to 8 So here's a, a cool options chain, chip, op, options chain tip. If you have a just barely higher expected move over here, you can buy options on this date. So buy the November 4th. And this is a high implied volatility. You can sell options this week. So sell this week, buy next week. That's where we get into calendar spreads. I personally just like doing calls, puts, call spreads, put spreads, sell call spreads, sell put spreads, you name it. But you can do call calendar, put calendar. But waste management, I would just go with the shares personally. What do you think the earnings are going to be, Bryce? Uh, sideways. Sideways? Okay, yeah, sideways is a way. Just remember that. So, yeah, waste management, definitely one of the stronger stocks. One of my favorite dividend stocks, if anybody asks me, hey, Weenie, what's one of your favorite dividend stocks? I would say waste management. Next up we got is Meta, the big one. And uh, Meta getting downgraded, but having a green day yesterday. Um, really, Meta, the expected move is decently high this week. And again, look at Meta. $16 is the expected move for this week. But if we just, you know, check out next week's expiration, it's, it's, it's less than 19. So if you wanted to buy a call spread or a put spread, check out the November 4th expiration. Or even look at this. Something like the November 18th. You can give yourself a lot more time. And look, it only goes up just by a little bit in itty bitty increments, probably as it gets ready for the holidays. But itty bitty increments on the upside over here in November. But I would be selling options this week. So Facebook, I would look at something like an iron condor. Maybe do something like sell the 135 strike calls and do something like sell like the 125 strike puts expiring this week. Of course, as a spread, I don't like unlimited risk. So basically... I think Meta's probably gonna like stay within this kind of range over here. This box, this gray box. What do you think Meta earnings are gonna do? Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I think they will be good, but have a poor reaction. Good, but have a poor reaction. Okay, interesting. Okay, well, the sector that's uh, you know really gonna probably take a beat down from Meta earnings is going to be the XLC. XLC, the communication sector, they've been a really weak sector. They've been money makers for us for the past few months, Bryce. We, we took some, it? yeah, we took some great short trades right in here, taking some profits down there. But XLC, I agree. You know, Meta, sell the options this week. If you're bullish and think there can be a squeeze, buy a call spread into next week. But just understand the communication sector is one of the weaker sectors. Next up, we got is Ford. Do you think Ford's going to be good or bad? Good or bad reaction, Bryce? Good. Good? Okay. So you think it can like pop and maybe like get up into this gap up here? This... Yes. Okay. 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 So maybe maybe a test of like 13 or 14. Okay. Well, for Ford, the expected move is 87 cents. That's a low expected move. So if you're bullish like Bryce over here, you could buy like an in the money Ford call. Call it good. Um, if, you're, if you're bearish and you think Ford's going to flush, maybe retest the lows or come underneath the lows. You can buy an in-the-money put. Otherwise, I would just do like a wide call spread or a wide put spread. So that is Ford. Let's check out Shopify. Shop. Now, I'm bearish shop, and the expected move is wide. $3.36 on $28 stock. Just a little bit wide of an expected move. Volatility is always priced a little bit higher during earnings, and they always give it a little bit more of a bump. So again, most of the time, option sellers win. Like two thirds of the time, sellers win. But one third the time, if you buy an option, you get a really good payout. Probably enough to cover the two thirds cost of the selling. So the market is efficient. And our job as option analysts are to agree or disagree with that efficiency. And that's how we profit. That's how we make mm -hmm. that moolah. So basically Shopify, 
I would do something like a bear call credit spread, sell the 31, buy the 32. So that's minus one on the 31 call and minus one or plus one on the 32 call. So that's a bearish bet saying Shopify, I think you're going to be underneath 31 at whatever expiration date you choose. I would give myself four to eight weeks on that type of bearish spread. So that's Shopify, McDonald's. Bryce, do you think McDonald's earnings are going to be good reaction or bad reaction? McDonald's, nice run from the lows. Look at this. 10% bad run. Reaction. You think bad reaction? Okay, so McDonald's is going to moon? Yes. <laughs> nah, bad mm -hmm. reaction for McDonald's. $8.34 is the expected move. That seems fair. Bid ask spreads are wide, so I just wouldn't trade options. I would wait till after the earnings report and be tuning into Weenie Trades Live to see what Weenie's up to in trading the McDonald's earnings report. So, yeah. You know, not, nothing too much there. If anything, you can usually sell call credit spreads. Probably do something like sell 260-250 calls and maybe do something like sell like the 240-250 puts, something like that, and give yourself four to eight weeks of expiration on that. And you should be able to profit pretty well. Apple, big old Apple. Expected move for Apple is $7.30 cents. Bryce, what do you think Apple's going to do? You're, you, you know Apple's mm -hmm. business model better than I do. I think Apple is going to thunk. You think it's going to thunk? Okay. Yeah. I think Apple's probably <laughs> going to go sideways. And so in terms of Apple, I would take a look at iron condors. And I'm actually going to show this one on Robinhood, and I'm going to construct it for you guys. But this week, the options chain expected move is very expensive. Mm -hmm for Apple. So guess what? I would like to do something like sell the 155 strike call, buy the 160 strike call. Now I'm not going to take just that trade, risk 400 to make 100. If Apple moons, you're screwed. But, and so basically the option chain is pricing that all in. But what I would do is I would sell the 148 and then actually go three strikes lower and buy the 145. So this is a pretty interesting iron condor. It has a maximum profit of 207 and a maximum loss of 293, but there's a much higher probability that you're going to get the 207 than you are to lose the 293. And you just want Apple, you know, beneath 157, but above 146. So you can tolerate about a 2.5% drop and you can tolerate about a 5% upside move. So maybe a slightly <laughs> bullish iron condor right there for Apple. And again, just play around with the strikes and fit a risk to reward that fits your parameters. And I think that you'll be very happy, uh, you guys. So that's Apple. Let's check out Intel, INTC. Intel, expected move. Intel, $2.10. Seems about fair. Do you think Intel's going to go up or down, Bryce? Up. Oh. Up. Oh. Oh. Okay. You know, I, I can see that. It's a little bit oversold. Again, I think it's going to probably just stay within a tight little range, so... Nothing too crazy. I love trading Intel after the report. So watch that at Weenie Trades Live. And then we got Pinterest. Pins. What do you think Pinterest earnings is going to be, Bryce? Pinterest earnings, $3.60 is the expected move. What do you think? Up. I think it's going to go up. You think it's going to go up? $25.60? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it could totally go up. It. AJ would um, be very excited to hear that Pinterest is going up. <laughs> Pinterest is ran by women. And certainly underneath this type of daily structure, if you break underneath 20.60, look out below. Um, there's not a lot of support until maybe 1930. So Pinterest could be interesting. Might trade it after the earnings report. TMUS, part of the communication sector, they have not reported. Expected move, a little bit under $8.00. What do you think about T-Mobile, Bryce? Good earnings, bad earnings. T-Mobile? Yeah. They have great commercials. Do they? I say up. You say up because they have great <laughs> commercials? Okay. <laughs> well, it could. The communication sector might hold it down, though. Um, so if you think up, you would want to do something like a put credit spread. You would sell like the 136, maybe buy the 134. Sell the 136, mm -hmm. buy the 134 collect a $60 credit, but there's a very high likelihood that you'll receive the full $60, then lose 140. So that would be TMUS. And our last two over here, we've got XOM. 
What do you think about Exxon Mobil, Bryce? You think the earnings are going to be good or bad? <clears throat> Oil and gas. Oil and gas. Mm -hmm. I think the earnings are going to be good, but the reaction will be poor. Earnings will be good, but reaction will be poor. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think the earnings will be good and there will be just a, a move sideways to slightly higher. So if you think the reaction is going to be bad, you know, this this seems fairly priced. So I w whenever something's fairly priced, that's when I like doing just like an in-out spread. So if you're bullish, you'd buy a plus one on the in-the-money call and minus one on the out-of-the-money call. If you're bearish, you plus one on the in-the-money put and you minus one on the out-of-the-money put. So yeah, I'd be a little bit more bullish as the XLE is still really strong. Again, XLE, nice breakout, continuing on higher. If XLE could pull back, that would be a potential dip buy. If XLE goes sideways and then higher, that could be also another buy price. It's not a buy right here though. That's not a buyable candle. I mean, you can buy it. It's just your risk to reward is trash. So if your risk to reward is trash, you can always just buy at half size, wait for the pullback take the full yes. size and then you're screwed if it's a stop out because mm -hmm. you're losing a lot of money on the first buy but your second buy is good so your average is okay out. if it works out exactly so this is the x that was the xle mm -hmm. and lastly we have abbey abbv earnings nice flat top breakout even just this week over 145 look at that very sexy earnings are on the 28th for abbey this has been a good stock over the years as well I think it's a strong stock that continues to get stronger. This one's been a good one for quite a while. You know, we got higher lows. This is a coiling formation. Bullish Abbey just in terms of the chart, but expected move is $5.52. And look at this. You can get a good deal on the options right over here. Buying November 25th. So buy November 25th. Maybe do something like sell this week or next week options either way though i'd expect abby to probably find some resistance at that 156 area do you have any final thoughts bryce on earnings Are you excited yes gonna make some money holiday season is here yes holiday season is here earning season <clears throat> is here i'm really pumped let's get it yeah <laughs> yeah Hanna Moose says i'd love to see the revenue books for pinterest <laughs> they're just selling your personal data they have no other revenue streams Maybe they'll start selling merch like weenie trades. Ooh. Get your weenie gear We're in the description. Today. Yeah, look at that. Just turned out like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, comment down below. Thanks for tuning in. We got to stream live now.